how did you get started? Like what led you to this path? Um, I was trying to find ways to work from home and I came across uh, some pop-ups of jazz and girls <laughs> and I thought it was all recorded and because I, yeah, I thought, I thought this was bullshit and it wasn't, they were not really live and I did the newbie things that guys do when they're new. It's like, hey, touch your nose so I know you're, you're real and I asked the girl to do that. She didn't, but I could see that she was actually typing back every time to people. Girls were often talking like that back in the days and I said it was real and then that idea marinated in my mind for quite a few weeks, if not months, <laughs> to maybe give it a try. I mean, I did not even browse more than that to see what people were about. I'm like, oh, I could go live and maybe make money. And before you know it, like now it's been 13 and a half years. So <laughs> I want to unpack that a little bit. What do you think is it about the job specifically that drew you in or has kept you for so long? Like, what do you love so much about it? To me, it was really uh, the interaction. I have a unique way of being online that's different than most people. I'm super interactive. <clears throat> and to me, it turned out to be a kind of very nice canvas in which I could put all my different sets of skills that I built throughout my life. So I was able to put my uh, background from dance, ballet, yoga. So I'm very physical and I do like to entertain and uh, you know, kind of putting on a show and, but I'm also a super social person. So when you read yourself and you can really put, um, use who you are and see that people enjoy that, it's kind of like gratifying at the same time. And it's really fun. And you actually do not see time go by. Like I did that for years. And when I did my first interview, some things that someone said, oh, you're the first person to actually make a career out of that. And I was like, oh yeah true it's true it's a job like but I never thought of it that way at all because though it I started because I needed to make money like anybody in the world uh it turned into such um pleasure time for myself too I lost a um, sense of time and sense of space I, I just get in that world and then at some point I'm like okay like it's been 12 hours maybe I should sleep you know and and so uh, it was fulfilling for me as well because you give so you feel you contribute to people's life a lot of people ended up watching me instead of watching tv because it was so fun and the way i do it they also don't just interact with me my my audience also became friend with each other and talk with each other in my room so the, the way i i like to cam is that it's really like i'm a host of uh, my own party or a hostess in a bar and I have all the crowd there and they're interacting with me and with each other. So it's really a social event that's chill and hang out. So a lot of people are is isolated and they don't always want to go out in a bar to socialize with people so they can be in the comfort of their house and meet people that have the same affinities. Because in a bar, you go with people that are geographically close to you. In a context like uh, this medium to be online, you meet people by affinity because they're going to either stay in my room at first because they called, oh, I like that music, or I like the ambience, and oh, well, what the hell she's doing there? Like, it's Cirque du Soleil, and, and then, so, so it becomes people that stick with you because affinities that you share, so you are really, yeah, surrounded with great people. <laughs> when you were talking a few moments ago, I almost got tears in my eyes because you were talking about how fulfilling the career, the work became for you, that time just stopped existing. And for me, I feel like that is truly one of the greatest things we can find as a human being is something that brings us that level of fulfillment where it's like, wait a minute, no, this is a career. This is a job because you just love it so much. And I mean, you're one of the most successful cam models ever. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's probably a big reason why, because you genuinely love it. And so you're really able to serve your members. They, they can feel that joy, that love, that passion, you know? Yes, exactly. Because if it's something you cannot fake, you know, yeah, like you can be told to, oh, you're supposed to smile and look happy. And, but when it's genuine, genuinely there, people feel that like right away and people see things that we don't think they see <laughs> 
the invisible stuff, you know, and, and yeah, you, you feel that honesty in people. So I think that helps uh, attract people to me in a way, because I do, I do love what I do uh, for multiple reasons. So, so would you say it's that the members become drawn to the authenticity in you? I think so, because you can enjoy, you enjoy things and people for different reasons in your life. And you connect, like there's people you like, because you talk about work with them. Another person you like to talk about your relationship with them are. And if uh, you have that honesty there and you can create actually and grow a real bond with someone where you know the person can actually understand you. And because I'm also a very empathetic person, naturally. And um, and if people can relate, it, it creates, it brings the whole relationship into a different uh, level. And so sometimes you're like, you know, people would like a cam girl just for the entertainment or just for the sexual part of it. But a lot of people, I always say people often come originally for, you know, the desires, the sexual desires or fantasies. But most people would usually come back because it surpassed that. It, it went into an actual bond and you create friendships. I have friends that became really close friends where we would talk for hours in private, nothing sexual, sometimes some, sometimes it, it really depends. And often it started with a little private and then it turns to 10 hour long of having wine and cheese and like discussing that person's life. And sometimes I start to share some of mine on certain things. And so there's really um, strong friendship that grew and that can last forever. Like these people will always be very meaningful to me. Absolutely. You know, I actually interviewed a member of yours and- <laughs> I did. Yes. Um, <laughs> one of your members, one of the things he said that I thought was really powerful and that stood out to me is that, you know, he actually ended up saving a ton of money throughout his years talking to you because instead of wanting to go and spend all his money at the bars and clubs, like his friends were doing, he would rather be home and talk to you. And he mentioned, you know, he he went through hard times and just having that, that connection, that friendship with you kind of helped him like pull him out of like a darker place. And that to me was like really proud. I mean, I think he said he ended up saving over a hundred thousand dollars. And I'm just like, that is that's a lot of money to save that you wouldn't have because you found this online connection, which he's still paying for, you know, but he would have spent even more doing other things and um, he feels like the connection was almost therapeutic for him and very healing, you know? And, or did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I heard that a few times. It's kind of one of my, uh, I think it's due to who I am naturally. I, it happened, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> um, it happened with a lot of Wednesday. <laughs> It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> You've created so much beauty and love in people. Yeah, they, so that's there are some that were fighting with illness or a very hard moment in their life. And some of them did tell me I was more helpful than uh, their psychotherapist just because my personality or empathy and my all you can do is show a different perspective on certain things and suggest like what I would do um, in all humility. You know, I don't have you know, certificates or anything, but, but when you uh, genuinely care for someone and you really try to understand, put yourself in the position of the other, but I have a different set of emotional system and all that. So it just bring a different point of view. And sometimes the person try to change their perspective on life or how to manage emotionally uh, obstacle that they have to pass. And and it opened the mind of many as some of them, like it helped them to, to keep fighting. And some of them would say like, they're, yeah, they're on chemo, they're in ICU. And they like, come to see me while they're there just to see me smile. Cause it gives them the power, it let the smile make, yeah, it gives them the energy and the power to keep fighting and to keep being optimistic and positive with this. And there's not many jobs in life that you can touch people so deeply. And, and it's also in a way that it's not, like going to a therapist and you talk to a stranger and they see you as a case study or something, you know, like it's really without any judgment because the person can also be as anonymous as it can be. And that gives the, often them freedom to be 
truly who they are and share things they might not share to a friend because the friend could be judging, it could be affecting the environment that they have, their relationship. And same with family or coworkers, you know, like it's always limited what you can share. And with me, they can decide to not be seen on cam. They can tell me a fake name. They can, you know, alter some facts so I don't know who they truly are. And to have, to be as anonymous as they, as they want, it gives them that freedom so they can finally share something fully and something just to do that does like have the work like just be able to get it out of your system and you don't always have like confidence like that and and to have the ability to do that a lot of people don't realize that being a online cam performer or i call myself cam artist um you have the ability to contribute in people's life and we actually have a positive, uh, we help in a positive way people in society. Some people like can be on the edge of maybe doing wrong by anger, by uh, trauma or frustration, and maybe they would be harmful to themselves or other people, you know, but be able to, um, to let it out and process it, it's kind of, it helps into um, managing certain emotions. I do believe we do good in people and, and in society. I think we're, we're important people <laughs> somehow at a very different level than just entertaining people. And I think that's kind of you. I mean, you said it perfectly. I think that's kind of one of our goals with some of these interviews is to show the world that this is more than the obvious. <laughs> like. It's, it's not just about the explicit sexual content. That's there, right? But that's obvious. Yeah. Let's really think about why are these people paying money, you know, to see something like if it were just sexual, they could see that for free online. Yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere, right? I mean, you could see it for free on Instagram, okay? Like <laughs> something more here that they're getting. It is it is the all about the interaction because again, most of... Um, most of the rest that is videos or clips or all that, um, even like co content creators, it's all, uh, the member that, that would spend on that is only in a position of uh, witnessing, watching something, they're out of it, they're not interacting with it, there's not the back and forth. So this is the ultimate, like the biggest difference that is there. And on, um, and on a platform like Jasmine, what happens that the most, most of these interactions, like the, the site was one of the biggest like premium approach, like premium meaning that instead of doing shows for tips in a free chat, uh, you would actually, people would have to click to go in a private room along with the performer. So it creates that intimacy and that, <clears throat> that little bubble. And then you're really more uh, close to that person and you get to know that person specifically and do a show for a big crowd. So it changes a lot the potential that it can have. And that's why I find this my most comfortable thing because though I can do shows for everyone to see, I do that in free chat, but not explicit, just slightly, um, you know, teasing. And, but I, I don't display anything. Um, and, but if they want more, they have to connect with me. And that that's where you can, bring things to a different level. Sometimes it's still just for the quick fun, which is fine, but it often can grow for much more. I want to ask you, because you're the perfect person to ask for this. You have a lot of experience in the industry, 13 and a half years. Um, as we've mentioned before, anyone can find out you are one of the most successful cam models for a reason, because in my opinion, the most successful cam models they're, they've figured out what you figured out, that it's, it's about, it's about the love. It's about the connection. It's about yeah. the energy behind this, right? What is the number one thing that the members want truly in your opinion? As I said earlier, I think it's really the interaction. So now there can be multiple levels of that. It can be in very different aspects. That, and some of them will be more towards the companionship. Some is for some friendship and some is just for the fun. Like there's people yeah, we're just going to be like having drinks together and just chat or listen to music. Right, right. And I think that really just speaks to our nature as human beings, right? We naturally want to be interacted with each other, but as I'm sure you know better than anyone, some people don't have um, as great of an opportunity to connect. Yeah. 
with beautiful women all the time or just with anyone, you know? And so I feel like this service gives them an opportunity to have that interaction that they crave as just a human being. Yes. And I think, I think COVID is a great example. I mean, that helped a lot. Like for me, I already have a lot of friends online. So for me to be isolated for two years, I think it was much easier on me because I come online, all my, all my friends are there, you know, and, and in the same way to go back to something earlier, but it goes with that interaction. Like we do that service, but you know what? They, they, they help us too. They contribute to us. They give us back a lot of love, a lot of care. Like a lot of people, they show how much uh, we mean to them, how much we're important for them. And they, and when I have a bad day, when I, I'm very sad or very stressed, I come online and people like some of them will detect that, some don't, but they'll make me laugh. And, and then I, I managed to put like whew, the bad stuff on the side and just enjoy the moment. What I have here, I'll go back to my crap with these stuff later, but I, I managed to forget and, and just let the positive vibe come come to me. I, I actually, I receive it too. And I appreciate that. They, they really helped me in some tough time as well. I knew they were supporting me or they were there for me. And so it, it's really a mutual relationship. It comes from a different angle, I guess, to a certain degree, but there's, there's something that is, it's really an exchange between the two. Beautiful. <laughs> what would you say is the biggest lesson you've learned from being in this industry and on Jasmine? Um, as I said earlier, I always been a, an empathetic person, but I also could be more, um, I, I think this grew a lot, like much more because they exchanged with me and it made me also see things in many different ways. I, I learned so many, what people went through and it, <laughs> it's humbling a lot because you realize you think like, you know, you have a big drama and then you're like, okay, <laughs> like I should shut up because what I'm living right now is nothing compared to what that person is going through. I learned a lot on my understanding of people and how we are so different and we are all full of flaws also. And it made me understand flaws. And sometimes you would go the fastest thinking, oh, that person is just mean or an asshole or selfish. But then when you put all the piece together with, because you talk and they share their life, you're like, Oh, I know where that comes from, you know, like, and then you like become much more tolerant and then you don't feel like it's so wrong anymore because you understand on a deeper level that there's a reason why the person is like that. Very beautiful. What are some of the other freedoms or luxuries that have come into your life as a result of this career on Jasmine? You talk about travel. To me, that was very important um, to be able to. And, I, and still now, I never travel for vacation. I never go went on a all inclusive hotel resort thing. I never done that. I always just went on trip because they were business trip related to camming. So I because I would be talking on panels or going for awards and trying to. Uh, grow my business, grow my knowledge of the whole industry beyond just me in front of the camp. But to also, I'm a foodie. I love food. So these are the time I always cook at home. But when I travel, I love tasting, um, tasting the, the, the food of all the different countries I've seen, seeing the countries, different climate, culture. I, I'm fascinated by that. And I thought I would never like I would never be able to afford that and live that and experience this, but it was a pack, like something I always wanted in my life. I got to do that. Yeah, to appreciate life, appreciate, and again, understanding other culture, understanding different type of people, because, and, and see it like for real, because even online, that's an opportunity we have also, is that we meet people from all over the world, different culture and everything. And this is something I would have not been able to learn from before. Uh, as an example, I'm switching a little bit back and forth between topics, but, uh, you know, we have an understanding of the world based on the news. And I personally never read the news. And I always tell people, you are my news channel because there is someone from a certain country that tells me, no, this is what's going on right now. And this is what's going on. And then they tell me how it is to live there and going through that and what are actually the real situation that's not news. And so really from the inside, and this is a, very, a lot, um, it's, 
it's knowledge that is kind of a luxury. You cannot access that unless you can be in contact with that kind of person and you have that friendship exchange all the time. So to me, to be able to put my foot uh, on different part of the world and to grow friendships with people in these different countries, I could then do it physically too. And that was very thrilling for me. And yeah, expanding my knowledge of food and then trying to make them at home when I'm not there. <laughs> but yeah. I love that so much. And pretty much what I just heard you say is, you know, you, your personality isn't so much into, you know, the fancy cars and all of that, but it sounds like you have an appetite for life and you've enjoyed having the opportunity to really have these intense experiences with life yeah, and, and to grow yourself even more. Like you said, you know, you don't want to be stagnant. So it's like aiming for new goals personally and professionally and, and having that platform that I'm sure, you know, being on Jasmine has helped you elevate in those areas that are important to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It led there. It, it, it led there. And yeah, I'm very thankful for that <laughs> because, you know, actually it's directly related because the very first time I actually traveled, flew in the air, <laughs> took a plane, was because I was nominated for my very first award in 2013. It was the first time that there was an actual category for cam girls. Like before that they didn't exist. So and I was nominated. I'm like, oh my God, what is that? Because I was like for five years locked in my room here, not knowing any cam model, not knowing anybody that does that job. And I was just in my little bubble in my room here. I did not even really have Twitter or social media. I was just coming online, going offline, and that was it. And living my own world. And then I was nominated and I'm like, okay. Well, then I need votes. Like, I'd like to give it a try to win, even though there was, it was very unlikely. I was against porn stars that have a whole machine behind them. And, you know, so I'm like, you can't compete with that. I'm a little nobody <laughs> in my room. And, and, but I give it a try and turns out I won it, but I flew anyway. So that was my reason. Like, if I'm nominated, I have to get there. So I wanted to attend that. So it was my first award event and my first red carpet and, and it was very, I was very nervous to bring the little red bunny out in the world. <laughs> but I got my first flight, which was crazy exciting. I was like a kid. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And when it took off the air, I was oh, like, it was very just that alone. I, I'm very kind of childish on certain things, but it's a first experience in my life. And you think like, oh yeah, you know, I live all these things. But to me, it was a new sensory experience. And it was really thrilling and exciting. And but now I've been flying so much since. And, and so now sometimes I pass out even before we take off. <laughs> but there's still that, that feeling. And it is directly related to what I do as a cam girl. If I didn't, if I wasn't nominated for an award, I don't know when, what would made me spend money on a plane and go somewhere. Nothing lasts forever and never take something for granted. And I never did. And I kept working even when I reached being popular, being a celebrity, and being the, the biggest model <clears throat> for this or that. I I never like be like, oh, okay, that's cool. I got it. Now I can like be lazy on the job. You know, I never took it for granted. I kept working and I kept putting as much meaning uh, in everything I do and being still like 200% in what I do. I feel so inspired just listening to you. I'm serious. You know what I mean? Like I... Um, my background is that I've been a reporter and sports reporter for several years. So I've interviewed some of the biggest athletes in the world. And I got a similar energy from you just now, this passion, this dedication, this obs almost obsession and love for, for what you do that inspires you to keep going, you know, like that's something that's in major athletes that I've interviewed and. <laughs> And I love that really, you know, it's so inspiring. It's so inspiring to be around, to have that level of passion and commitment and dedication and, and putting in hard work. And, and I think that's something else that's really important for people to understand is that this isn't, this isn't just like a, 
easy, simple job. I mean, you love it, like you said, but it's still hard work, right? Yes, it is. It is. There, there's pro and cons, like anything. And uh, it looks easy. A lot of people try and it doesn't work. It is not for everybody. I'm someone that learned to be, because my ballet background, I learned to be very disciplined and strong work ethic. The competition is huge. And you cannot take criticize. Um, like when people criticize you, they correct you and you're never good enough and you always have to work harder and you, you don't, you cannot be broken every time and re-question yourself and all that. So my, like I always been a very, very confident person uh, cause that kind of training, it's kind of like army for, for girls <laughs> in an art way. They try to break you down to build you back up. Um, so this was very rough emotionally and you, you have to be tough to make it. And so this is my background. So then, and it's same when I was studying piano and things like that. Again, strong competition and the demand is high and you never work hard enough. You're never going to be good enough. So you have to just keep surpassing yourself and keep giving and giving and working. So, and also I always had, um, I'm very pragmatic too. I'm someone that understand that, um, you, you get as much as you, you put into it. And if you don't, you cannot just be complaining, oh, why things aren't just coming to me? It's like, well, maybe you didn't work for it. Like you didn't do the sacrifice that it requires to do that. And it's like that for many careers. Like you, you have to, if you want to elevate to higher levels, you have to make your way up there. I'm glad that you are one of the shining lights and faces of this industry, really. <laughs> Thank you. You have a favorite memory on Jasmine? A favorite memory? Yeah. A specific one? I, I, a favorite. I have a funniest one, and that odd one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anything, anything that comes to mind. Um, I once did a video, um, I once did a video of me in a kiddie pool, that inflated pool that I put on my bed, a little, and I did a video of that, and then when I did my first trip to Spain and I was nominated for an award, I did a promise to my members that if I win that award as best cam model of the year, I would do it live on cam. Now, this was like totally not smart because I have electricity all around me and I was in the little kiddie pool and normally I pop cava. If I win, I have to pop the champagne and stuff. So um, anyway, so it was messy because there was water there and I turned out to... At first it was in free chat and just partying together. People would tip and I would have the little ducky that I would squirt on me. And it was just totally silly. And that's not something you see very commonly on, on the site at all. <laughs> Cause it's not really very luxurious, luxurious rooms and you know, girls being always proper and at their best. This was like a total messy, messy, ridiculous show. And then I started to get really cold. My knees were red. I was like, so cold. I was guys, I gotta get rid of the pool. Now, filling the pool was one thing. Removing the water from the pool was a different story. I had to go like an hour or two to recover my pool and, and do that. I think, I think these are my favorite memories, actually, because I do like these very gracious moves that are very elegant and really well executed. And then I'm just going to do like, I don't know, a major clumsy move. Like there's just these moments and everybody just laugh at me. And I don't mind people laughing at me. I'm very laughable <laughs> with things that have happened. But I always, um, they've always been appreciative of actually letting myself be imperfect. I always say I'm perfectly imperfect because I let myself be my true self. And so I think that's a nice thing too, because I don't always force that smile or they'll see if some days I'm more mellow and I have the freedom to be my real self and share it to others. And they appreciate all these different colors my, my mood can have over time too. I think, yeah, I, I, I can see why that's attractive to members too, because it just makes you endearing and, and authentic and uh, relatable. You know what yeah. I mean? That's kind of what we crave as human beings, like to see ourselves in each other. Yeah. It's just healing and and um, that's really sweet. Thank, <laughs> thank you for sharing that. I love that story. <laughs> so speaking of healing, I want to talk to you about the new campaign that's been launched, the Soldier Aid Campaign. 
So first and foremost, I'm really curious. You've been in this industry a long time. You hear about this campaign. What are your first thoughts? My first thought, I wrote to the CEO right away that I was crazy impressed that they did that. I, I wrote him an email right away. I was like, oh my God, I'm so impressed. I can't believe you're doing that. This is so wonderful. And all oh, my career has been about that. And I was like, and when I had the opportunities, like when I would go with my first award, my first thing I did, um, I was wondering, okay, what do I do? I just say thank you for the award and, you know, pat myself on the shoulder and do the same as usual. I'm going to use it for, for something more. And this is why I started to do more than just camming because then I had the I created the opportunity to be in media and be a voice for the industry and educate people. That was my mission. It was not to put myself everywhere and be even more famous. That was not my intention. It was truly to educate people to see what this is about, how much, so much more, it's so much deeper. It's so important in people's life. Uh, we contribute for the better of society, actually. And I wanted to educate people. It's not just porn, how, how is it different? And, and sometimes, you know, it's not even just, and for the mainstream people, but also the user, uh, adult users, and actually even for the pe like the models too. There's a lot of performers that don't even realize how they could do so much more. Not everybody has that naturally, and not everybody has, some people you have to grow that set of skills and, and to understand things in a different level. So what, since we have that opportunity to be there for people, to educate models that do not have that naturally, to educate them, to be able to evolve as a person, but be able to offer more to the people that are drawn to them. I think it's it's a great thing and it makes, it helps to not keep what we do just on a superficial level. Absolutely. It's interesting. I, I really like your, your take on that because what I heard you say is one of the benefits of this program is that models that may not, um, naturally understand how to go deeper and give that deeper level of connection to a member who really may need it, they now might have those tools to be able to do that through this program. Yeah. And it's something you get better as you do it too. So the more they understanding and more you interact with um, people like that, the more it becomes natural. But to have something that's educational, make you understand what you don't know and gives you a set of tool to try to do that. I think it's a, it's a great thing. And it was like way overdue. It's something that I wish existed way before. And I wish it's something that will be more common um, into the, this industry. I think it needs that because it can be so much more. And I feel like in the latest years, it's went more towards just the entertainment part in general, because I don't know why. I, it's more superficial and entertainment. And I think it's fading that how the platform and the models, like, cause before it was more in my earlier years, it was more of an underground industry. Like it was not as known. Um, and then, and then when uh, in the same phase that when I started to do all the interviews and all these were for mainstream. So it kind of like put a little bit I like to think that I might have contributed to bring a little bit of visibility on that because the award existed. I won the award and I decided to try to have a voice for the industry and try to give it the, the image and reputation it deserves. So I think I somehow at least a little bit contributed to that. And then it kept going more and more popular, less of an underground obscure thing. And, and I think at the same time it grew that direction. It also became a little bit more superficial and more you know, on the sex part. And that to me was sad because to me, I, it was not the core of what I do and my values and how I approach uh, this medium and this streaming. So I hope if there's more things like that can go back to the actual source of what this can be um, and humanizing it and bringing it to these bonds and relationship instead of a show in front of like 10,000 people, you know, where you actually, it's much more impersonal and people are just a number or you just people for their wallet. You know, I think this is so much more. So I hope these values going to come back a little more. <laughs> I love what you said. That's, that's really interesting to me. So for you, it was kind of like, Oh, good. When you heard about this program, it's kind of like, good a program to kind of shift the focus back to how you see it which is healing for other human beings yeah. 
on, you know, in whatever way they need. I, earlier you mentioned the word interaction because it covers the basis for a lot of different things. Like you said, some people just need a little fun and a little stress relief. Some people de do need that connection where they feel safe to talk to you about anything. Um, that's really beautiful. That's really beautiful. Like that one of the top models, you know, in the industry knows at its core that this industry, it sounds like in your opinion is about healing. Is that fair to say, or am I, or am I putting that out there? I don't know. Healing is, it is to a certain degree. Yes, it is healing because a laugh, a laugh is healing. It's uh, it's about, it's all the, it's all the, the layer, layers are in there. So sometimes it's for the simplicity of it and just, yeah, cracking a laugh, forgetting about your crappy day you had, like for the members, they come because they just need to wind down and get the stress out of the way. And other people, it's really for something much stronger. So I guess it is kind of different various ways of healing as well and to bring a, like a little bit of sunshine in people's life it, it helps to have a guide like that like that educational um training that that jasmine did at the same time you have to stay a little like open-minded and neutral and loose around it and to just use the tools like keep it in you in the background but then assess for everybody for their own individuality and their own story I think that's one of the things I love the most about uh, cam artists is their ability to really, most of them, or a lot of them, their ability to really read people and to kind of figure out like, okay, what does this member need? And then basically provide that. And it, like you said, they're not just, they're not usually telling you, I really need more caring and nurturing in my life. You know what I mean? Like, but you're able to pick it up off of them somehow and then yeah, just you have, to be sensitive. you have to have that sensitivity basically and I, I sense people I read people a lot like they're to learn to read the hints and there are what is not said read reading behind between the words and what is behind because someone can feel uncomfortable to actually ask something or be demanding of something and it's like or we try to share something doesn't know how. So it, sometimes you have to give that little, like throwing the, the little line there to help. And, but it is in a very subtle way. And it's just to help the person to open up and feel comfortable. And so sometime I'll, I'll start and take over. And sometime, again, it's going to depend on every person. There's some people are very uh, inhibited and some people are really out there. You know, some people are uncomfortable and some other are comfortable with with this so you have to really it's fine tuning it's really fine tuning and you as you get more experience you you become better at that as well absolutely and again i really like what you said earlier which is just like this programs like these kind of put the focus back on the foundations of this industry and not just about all of the other things but yeah, the frills <laughs> Thrills, you know. Um, I'm curious from your perspective, from all of your experience, why do you think a program like Soldier Aid is important? Well, again, like I said before, it helps to educate people and be able to, uh, if you have people that are in need or don't know how to handle that, or but they come to you and they try, but they they even don't know how you can try to help them a little bit to a certain degree anyway. And and to have the ability to have a basic knowledge, general knowledge would help you to uh, maybe read people better and how to decide how to handle uh, situation better as well. So it helps to um, avoid mistakes <laughs> where you could make things worse. <laughs> so um, because that could be not good at all. So and so I think it's good that it it, it makes people do that. At least it minimize it minimize the dam possible damage, <laughs> and 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 the people would finally maybe find someone that they know they can come back to in moments of needs, and, and to know there is a there is a ear there that 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 felt good every time they talked to that person. So it, you can become that go-to person when in need. And, but again, for some that don't have it naturally, it, it helps them to have that and to be able to provide that for people that, that 
ask for it. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Because I think like you've mentioned, you know, it's, it's PTSD and veterans, but sometimes when you're just in need in life, it doesn't really matter what it is, but you're in a hard time just knowing, okay, I know that I can go and talk to little red bunny and, you know, I can just vent and she'll, you know, she's, she's not going to judge me. She's not going to, you know, make me feel uncomfortable. Just knowing that you have someone sometimes helps so much when you're really in a hard place, you know? Yeah. It brings that little comfort. I think comfort. Yes. Yes. It's, it's a little bit of comfort for what, for what it's worth, <laughs> but it can, it can go a long way. It can really worth a lot for some people because a lot of people tend to isolate. So to be able to reach out and in a very safe zone as well, because this is, it is a very safe environment that is judgment free and, and it's a casual thing. It's not like having a psychologist session and I don't want to diminish that this value either, but I'm just saying that there's, there's an in between because a lot of people, they might have PTSD, but won't admit it because, because like I said, it, it's like the pride would be affected. And then they think they're less of a man for that. Like it's unaccepted to, they're supposed to be strong. They're the saviors, you know, they're the one protecting people. So like you some of them would feel like it's it's failing or they'll be judging themselves harshly. Well, I don't think they should, but this it's normal. It's also a thing that, that men have or well women too. There, you know, we're all human beings, men or women, people want to be happy, isn't it? Like, and it's so hard for so many people in life because we all like the, the road is bumpy as hell and all for different ways and different reasons. We all just <laughs> try to pursue happiness in any form possible but life is never easy and it's but yeah and the way to reach happiness is going to be different for each people but that i think it's and happiness can be comfort for some it can be financial for others it can be gratification or like it's different for everybody but i think at the core we all just want to be happy no matter the gender yeah i agree so beautifully said (laughs) <laughs> you just have a way with words and and yeah it's been just such an honor to talk to you really it is yeah <laughs> you're a beautiful soul and I can see why members love I think even just being connected to your energy probably some of them get you know comfort from that <laughs> yeah. yeah I think the energy and the type of personality and they know that I'm you know, I can be super silly and goofy and all, but at the same time, they know that there's more depth into me. And if some people want it, then, and, but it makes, yeah, they appreciate the whole range, you know, of the ridiculous me that's just making all the jokes and stuff, but they know that, yeah, they know behind all, all that, that that's there. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And they have this, like, like you said, humans just want to be happy. And it seems like ultimately what you try to do is try and facilitate happiness in other people. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's just, if I can contribute to any level <laughs> of making someone happier, even for a short moment, I do cherish that a lot. It means a lot and it gives me a purpose. Like it kind of tells me I'm at the right place doing the right thing and and like I said there's many there's not that many uh things you can do in life that puts you in a position to have the uh the opportunity to do that and so that's why I do cherish what I do because I get to contribute do what I can (laughs) to contribute someone's life to be better or happier yeah like you know you know when it's all said and done you've made a difference in so many people's lives and you can, I mean, you can rest knowing that that's like, not everyone gets that, you know, like not everyone has that opportunity to say, I know for a fact that I have really helped some people out. (laughs) You know what I mean? That I can only imagine is one of the most fulfilling experiences you, you could have. It is. It is. <laughs> I, I value and cherish that a lot. And I, it makes me very happy. And yeah, it gives me a sense of purpose and it's gratifying and it, it is fulfilling. And it, you, it makes you feel good about yourself. And yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for this incredible interview. I just like to end by asking one final question, which is simply what's something you're the most grateful for in your life right now? Uh, being healthy <laughs> and, um, and for everything that life has given me uh, on the way, you know, there's so many people that come and go. Some are there to stay forever. Some is just part time, but I try to get the best of all the opportunities I've had and all the people I came across to meet. So I'm very great. I'm very grateful for, you know, there's turn of event in life that were really bad and really tough, but they led eventually to something really great. And so that made me even appreciate the disasters <laughs> that could have happened to me. And even the, the bad things that I had to go through, I became appreciative of the bad because it made me who I am today. And it led me in a path that if, if I didn't come across these things, I would not be here today. And I would not be meeting certain people and these people would not be part of my life. So I am grateful for even the miserable time I had to go through in my life. And it, yeah, and I'm grateful for who I am and, and for whatever is coming next, <laughs> you know, where, where that's going to bring me to. So, yeah. Beautifully said. It's been an honor to interview you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, you're really great and enthusiastic and the, the, it all flows super smooth. And uh, yeah, because I've done many interviews, so I never know how it's going to go. And it was really, really, really nice. <laughs>